What's going on doll fans? It is your boy Dylan and I'm making a video today. Got a few things, a couple topics I want to discuss. There are a couple like more broadly NFL related things uh, that I want to discuss and then also a couple things related specifically to the Dolphins that I want to update you guys on. So first we're going to start with this. Uh, multiple reports have this out but this is uh, coming from the NFL app. Texans closing facility during bye week due to player testing positive for COVID-19. Well, I guess they're lucky that they're on their bye. The Houston Texans are closing their facility during the bye week. The NFL, or NFL Network Ian's insider Ian Rappaport reported that a player tested positive for COVID-19 leading to the facility shutdown. Per a source informed of the situation. Fortunately, Houston is on a bye week, which means a game isn't in jeopardy due to the positive test. Still, most non-player staff members are usually in the building during a bye week, so they will be sent home until given the all clear. The Texans, who will continue to test all of the players during the bye week, released the following statement. Late last night, we received notice that a Texans player tested positive for COVID-19. In accordance with NFL protocols, the player immediately self-isolated, and our infection control officer and other members of the infection response team began working with the NFL to perform contact tracing. Our facility will be closed today to players for deep cleaning. We are in close consultation with the NFL as well as other team uh or as our team of independent doctors and specialists and will follow their guidance regarding our scheduled bi-week operations the health and safety of our team as well as our entire staff are of highest priority again i mean that's just a flat lie because if that was actually the case they wouldn't risk it with people's lives right there have been more reports that the antibodies go away uh after a few months now uh new studies have shown and stuff there's definitely definitive evidence you can get it again i mean there's no there's no reason to risk people's lives other than they just got to keep their fucking profits rolling in and so it's just a lie it's just a flat out lie every single time any one of these officials or someone from the nfl or you know one of these spokespeople says you know it's uh the the health and safety is our highest priority it's bullshit their highest priority i mean first of all i don't even really think that it's much of a priority even on the list but if it, it it's unquestionably not the highest priority clearly the highest priority is making sure that the games continue on and that the season continues on it's inarguable that that is their highest priority. So, I mean, if you just want to look at it on its face for the framing, the way that they framed it, I mean, they could say it's a top priority and that's could potentially be more accurate, right? If it's a if it's the second or third priority, then it could be a top priority, but it's definitely not the highest priority. If that was the case, then they would just shut down the entire fucking season and not take a risk with people's lives. Now, there have been ton I've talked a bunch of times about how it's not just while you have the virus that's the problem, but all of the different things that it does to the body can cause significant health issues later. And we've just talked about recently how the first player from the NFL has experienced uh, multiple hospitalizations and is now out for the season due to COVID-19. Okay, because why? Because he had it, he got rid of it, but now he's having a bunch of uh, issues after the fact right you know so it's it's just total bullshit um total fucking bullshit anyway houston lost 35 28 home to the green bay packers on sunday I don't really give a shit you know it is what it is anyway but so let's continue on so more to that point though the next article that i'm going to read to you and the next report that i want to give you uh just goes to show that right so yahoo sports this is an article report nfo planning to host fans at 20 percent capacity at the super bowl so there's been discussions that they might push it back that hasn't been decided yet they're still trying they're still planning to play it on time and they want to have 20 percent. they want to have a fifth of the stadium full despite the fact that it's undeniable that these uh games are part of the reason not the whole reason for sure you know schools reopening and like you know florida taking away all fucking covid restrictions those things have a part to play in it too but these games with these large gatherings of people even if it's a fifth of the stadium capacity it's still contributing to the massive spike in cases that we are having in this country it is unfathomable to think that nobody 
is getting this virus by going to a game and that it's not spreading at all. I mean, how many fucking times do they pan to the audience and there are people without masks on? It happens every fucking game, pretty fucking much. Well, the ones that have fans in the stadiums. So, you know, it's a giant fucking disaster. And again, but it just... More as we go along, more and ev more evidence mounts that all they care about is their fucking uh, their profits. If you were hoping to attend the Super Bowl in 2020, you're in luck. The NFL is planning to host Super Bowl. Uh, what is it? 55. I think, with around 13,000 fans in attendance or 20% capacity, according to ESPN's Adam Schefter. And at the rate they're going, though, uh, to be honest, they could increase that because a lot of these stadiums are increasing as the season goes on, the number of fans that they let, let in. Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Super Bowl will be held at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa on February 7, 2020. Also, let's also note, though, that Florida is, of course one of the worst states in the country when it comes to covid but the super bowl is being held in florida in which they want to have t uh 13 000 fans at 20 percent capacity i mean it's just a fucking joke dude it's a sick joke the tampa bay buccaneers have allowed fans at games in 2020. fans who attend super bowl uh 55 will be in pods six feet apart according to, uh, to Schefter. they will also be required to wear masks okay <sighs> there's so much stupidity in there First of all, again, just real quick, I'll touch on the masks because I just said something about it. It's impossible to enforce. And that's proven every single game day that has fucking fans in the stadiums when they pan to the fucking uh, stands. It's impossible. Also, it's impossible to enforce the social distancing. It is impossible. But look at what they said there. Fans who attend Super Bowl 55 will be in pods six feet apart. Those two concepts in and of themselves are contradictory. How are people going to be in pods? A pod is a cluster of people. How are they going to be in pods, but then also separated? Now, maybe there's more details in there that could potentially maybe make it plausible, but not really, because think about it. Just imagine uh, bleachers or stands in your head, okay? And imagine people being spread out six feet they wouldn't then be considered it wouldn't qualify as a pod because then they would be spread out to the point where they wouldn't be clustered together but of course we also know that's not even the case because you know families are going to sit together and so on and so forth but if one person from that family comes into contact with somebody else that has it from halfway across the fucking or on the other side of the stadium because they just so happen to fucking stand in line at the concession stand or go use the bathroom with that person then they can spread it to their whole family when they go sit with them and move their fucking mask because they're going to want to take a drink from the drink that they just bought at the concession stand or a hot dog that they just bought or whatever so it's fucking stupid nfl leaves open the possibility of games happening in week 18 with all the uncertainty covid 19 has added to the season the nfl wants the date of the super bowl to remain the same obviously if the league has to add a week 18 to make up for postponements the super bowl will still take place february 7th according to Schefter. in that scenario the league would eliminate the off week after the championship round of the playoffs so they would eliminate that by or that uh essentially a bye week or the whatever that week off in between that that's normally the week of the pro bowl uh anyway which just is going to increase injuries because then they're not going to have the normal rest that they would have before that championship before the super bowl game after the championship game before the super bowl so they are increasing the probability that there's going to be more injuries now that they're going to you know force people to play straight games and also there's only but so much they can push things back especially every week that passes with more teams losing uh, you know having taken their bye week you can't reschedule them and take away their bye week anymore because it's already gone right it, what if they make that decision and make a week 18 and uh take away that 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 week off you can't do that again you did it the one time you can only do it the once so they're gonna run out of time they're gonna run out of space to fit all this shit in um 
I mean, logically, anyway, but with the way that, again, all, because they don't care about people's lives. So they'll fucking make it happen, right? They'll make it happen. They'll make sure that it continues to go on as long as people fucking buy into it. As long as people keep going to the games, as long as these players keep saying, you know what, we're going to keep playing, even though, you know, these injuries are destroying us. And even though, you know, COVID continues to spread and get worse, despite all this stuff, you know, we're just going to keep playing. And I get it, man. Like, I get it. They've got lives. they got families. they got to feed and stuff like that. And they love the game, blah, blah, blah. I get it. I get it. I get it. But none of that fucking matters if people are dying left and fucking right. Anyway, like, it's just, it's, it's, it's gross. The NFL has not added a week 18 yet, though that uh, could become a possibility if games get postponed later in the season. For now, the league has been able to move by weeks or play games on different days of the week to make up for COVID-19 postponements. For now, that's not going to last forever. Uh, okay, so now there's a couple Dolphins specific things that I want to talk about uh, because there is some news coming out of Miami. And so let's see. Uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is the Dolphins have reportedly given Adam Shaheen a contract extension. It's a two-year, $7.85 million contract. The Miami Dolphins reportedly agreed to a two-year contract extension with tight end Adam Shaheen on Wednesday. According to ESPN's Adam Schefter, the deal is worth up to $7.85 million with $3.2 million in guaranteed money. Uh, Shaheen, who was set to become a... Look... First of all, before I get into the rest of this and before we actually get into details, like, I'm just kind of whatever overall on this. I mean, he's been okay. Like, you know, obviously, you know, I think that the the Dolphins are overperforming based off of, you know, certain other factors like the injuries and the fact that we haven't played a single team that hasn't been missing a significant amount of uh, their, you know, key players, starters, etc. Um, you know, uh, so... I don't really think that and he's just kind of been whatever like he hasn't really produced that much he has like a touchdown i think and a, and a few passes uh, a few catches but like you know i mean it's it's a lukewarm thing i don't really care one way or the other but like these these dolphins this dolphins organization is terrible at contracts they are just fucking atrocious i mean because look two years okay it's a short contract it's it doesn't seem like it's that much money, but is he really worth? Uh, let's see, what is that? I mean, three and a half million, uh, almost four million per year for those two years. Is Adam Sheen really worth four million a year? I don't know. I'm not sure that he is. Maybe he is, but then they also give him three point two million in guaranteed money, so he's gonna get all that like pretty much up front and right away. And so, uh. I mean, you know, I don't know. Whatever. Sh uh, Shaheen, who was set to become a free agent after the season, was traded to Miami from the Chicago Bears in July for a conditional late-round pick. So, yeah, that's right. So we pick him up. We give away draft capital to get the dude. Not sure that was even really worth it, but whatever. I mean, it was a late-round conditional pick. So, you know, I guess just, you know, take a chance. But he hasn't really proven to be, as far as I'm concerned, to be worth a two-year fucking almost four million dollar a year extension i don't know whatever anyway after shaheen starred collegiately at division two ashland university the bears selected him in the second round of the 2017 draft chicago hoped he would be the long-term answer to its tight end woes but in 27 games with the bears over three seasons he registered just 26 receptions for 249 yards and four touchdowns his best season was his rookie campaign campaign when he had 12 grabs for 123 yards and three scores I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I, I don't think it's worth it, bro. Like, uh, I'm just fin. I mean, at the at the very least, wait till the end of the season. Like, and wait to see if he becomes an even bigger contributor or whatever. But like, the timing of their decisions is also like stupid, right? Like with Tua. I mean, if you just absolutely insisted on in putting him in for this upcoming game, and just at least wait until after the bye week and after the week of practice leading up to the game right but like i don't know <sighs> whatever in six games this season with the dolphins the 26 year old has been targeted only seven times but made them count with five catches for 58 yards and two touchdowns i, I mean i guess but again like you know we're playing against teams especially the past couple weeks 
who are just, you know, decimated by injuries. So the level of competition, I mean, he came from a Division II school. So, I mean, the, the level of competition on these defenses is a lot closer to that than it was, you know, at the beginning of the season or what it would be had those teams been at full health, right? So, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. Shaheen is a touchdown catch in the Dolphins past two games and enjoyed perhaps, I mean, but that even, so his two touchdowns came against the Jets and they destroyed 49ers uh, defense. I mean, that just, it doesn't, it does not add up to me. It just does not add up to me. Uh, let's see. And enjoyed perhaps the best showing of his career in week six against the New York Jets when he caught three passes for 51 yards and a score. I mean, but that's not impressive. It's against the Jets, and they're decimated by injuries on top of their other problems. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not it, it, it's not earned. It hasn't been fucking... He hasn't proven anything, really. I mean, and his history doesn't fucking warrant it either. Like, the timing is off. It doesn't make sense. It's not logical, and I don't think it's worth it, bro. But, like, okay, I guess... Whatever, while he was seemingly starting to become a trusted target for veteran quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick, the Dolphins announced last week they were rolling with rookie first-round pick to a Tiger by Law despite their 3-3 record. So, I mean, what if they don't have chemistry now, right? What if what if they're just kind of like, whatever? What if he prefers, you know, uh, Gesicki and Smythe over Shaheen, right? What if that's just how it plays out? Whatever, dude. Shaheen is Miami's number two tight end behind Gesicki, who has had a couple of good games and a few no-shows this season. With Gesicki, Shaheen, and 2018 fourth-round pick Durham Smythe, the Dolphins have some depth at the position, and that could be needed as Taga Vailoa gets acclimated to the NFL life. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, you know, having them three, you know, uh, going forward, I don't mind that, you know. Uh, it's cool, right? Like, you know, I... I it's a solid tight end room. Like, it's it's not, like, you know, going to blow the doors off anybody, right? Um, but it's solid, and it's something to work with. I just, I don't know that you give him a two-year fucking, especially right now, wait till the end of the fucking season and fucking see how things play out. I mean, what if he sustains some kind of major injury now after this, right? Like, I mean, like, what if... God forbid, knock on wood, whatever. But what if he goes out and he plays in this next game against a really tough defense? And let's say he tears an ACL or something. And now, you know, he's out for the next year of his two years. Two-year extension. Like, I mean, it's fucking crazy. Anyway. Uh, all right. There is one more little article that I want to get to. Dolphins trade rumors. Jordan Howard available ahead of NFL deadline. Miami Dolphins running back Jordan Howard is reportedly available on the trade block ahead of the 2020 NFL draft. Or, excuse me, 2020 NFL trade deadline next Tuesday. I mean, look, bro, the list of players that they have on the, the you know, failed evaluations list is just absurdly long compared to the number of players that they've kept around or that, you know, have proven themselves and are expected to be, like, stalwarts and, you know, mainstays of this team. Like... I mean, next year, I'm pretty sure the team is going to look significantly different. Like, there's still going to be a ton of new bodies. You're still going to have, like, a third or a half of the team that's different. Like, I mean, whatever. Anyway, Mike Kay of N uh, NJ Advanced Media reported the news Wednesday. Howard's availability doesn't come as a surprise. He's been a healthy and active in each of the, uh, the Dolphins' last two games after signing a two-year $9.75 million contract with the franchise in March. And I told you, I was like, it's the same thing as Shaheen. Well, sort of. Uh, but like, because uh, they gave him, I, I say that mostly because it's a two-year similar numbers. But like, I told you, bro, like, what? I, I didn't really think it was, you know, all that great of a signing. I was like, it's going to be kind of whatever. Like, he hasn't really, you know, uh, whatever. And he hasn't done shit. And now they're go about to get rid of him. So they're probably going to have to eat some dead money, you know, fucking like it's just whatever, dude. Miami has plenty of depth at running back and it appears the team is confident with Miles Gaskin, Matt Breida and Patrick Laird as its main backfield options. Howard failed to make an impact in limited playing time across four appearances. He rushed for just 14 yards on 18 carries, 0.8 yards per carry, though his goal line opportunities allowed him to score three touchdowns. He had one catch for negative three yards. The 25-year-old Indiana University product enjoyed his best season as a rookie with the Chicago Bears in 2016. He recorded 1,313 rushing yards 
252 attempts with six scores and route to his only Pro Bowl section. Also, though, what if they can't find a trade partner? I mean, now he's been fucked. So that's going to cause a little bit of feelings with him, you know, and uh, it could add to some of the potential, uh, you know, problems in the locker room. Like, anyway, whatever. His per carry average dropped over the next two years in Chicago, but he still scored 18 total touchdowns. He showed signs of resurgence in a more niche role with the Philadelphia Eagles last year, averaging 4.4 yards across 119 carries. A trade is probably the best option for him over spending the remainder of the campaign on the fringe of Miami's roster. I mean, that's probably true. K list, uh, you know, for him, K listed a reunion with the Eagles as a potential solution. He still wouldn't be ticketed for a major role once Miles Sanders returns from a knee injury, but he probably slotted as the team's number three back behind Sanders and Boston Scott. The Dolphins shouldn't ex expect more than a late round draft pick in return. Yeah, so, I mean, that's the thing, bro. Like, especially the more that they do stuff. The more that these Dolphins continue to make transactions and with the people that they get rid of and the failed evaluations and so on and so forth, like they keep losing. Like they lose more and more, right? So they have to keep, so like if they if they get a player that they traded for and they got, you know, whatever pick for them, um, like let, let's take Josh Rosen, for example. We gave a second round pick and a fifth round pick, okay? And then we cut him. We just cut him because we couldn't get anybody to trade for him and then we just cut him just massive loss all the money we gave him was a loss uh, well i mean whatever uh, from the business aspect and from the franchise perspective all that was a loss the fifth and second round picks are a loss and but there are so many examples of that about how the dolphins they just can't get any of these things right or any of these transactions right the vast majority of them not any of them some of them yes but like the vast majority of them they're just terrible they're just absolutely fucking terrible i don't know whatever um so you know i don't know like people still are super confident in what this you know what this team is doing and what this organization is doing but i you know i don't know it's mind-blowing to me because it just yeah the, the data just keeps adding up and it's it doesn't paint the kind of picture that people are you know putting out there you know so we'll see i mean again i i hope that they prove me wrong i want them to prove me wrong but you know we'll see they still have a long way to go in doing that all right well anyway i'm gonna get up out of here uh i hope that you appreciate my perspectives if you do make sure you hit the subscribe button make sure you hit the like button make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts share my channel and videos with your friends and family leave your questions comments and concerns down in the comment section and of course as always follow me on twitter at dylan tartaro and with that i'm out i'll see y'all soon fins up